My name is Dr. Samir Galvis. I'm from Sri Lanka. So today we have a scattered topic called state-sponsored warrantless wiretapping and government mass surveillance over the lawful interception. So that's now this is actually something that uh, it's sort of really gravest uh, cyber threat to the whole world. So as you can see, there are many things uh, around the world with the people talking about so many things with regards to this subject, but most of the people mostly are uh, well, uh, not talking uh, this topic overtly. The, the reason that this is something sensitive, right? Sensitive, uh, that means like, you know, the pe much, much more people have the fear to talk uh, about this type of surveillance related uh, topics. So let me, uh, you know, forward into the presentation. So um, is my welcome, so that's all right. So let's keep it. So uh, I just actually now since like, you know, everything's in, um, in um, there are certain tedious theories we discuss uh, in uh, this presentation. So uh, you shouldn't sleep. So it's just say anti-sleep disclaimer, right? So that's all right. So just actually funniest part. So uh, now this is the content of the presentation right now. So certain, uh, um, the, what you call the wordings. So we explain like later stages. So uh, as you can see, one, two, three, four points, and we are talking about spying, spying espionages, right, backdoors, uh, lawful backdooring, interception, ever stopping, blah, 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 right? So um, as well as like number five comes with interception, legal or illegal, lawful interception, judicial interception. So warrantless wiretapping, surveillance, mass surveillance, and as number nine and 10, so top secret cyber hawk and eagle eye operations, military intelligence, cyber intel command and control. So those things actually we're gonna talk in the uh, subject of this arena. So first of all, the first uh, topic, spying, espionage in digital and cyber era. What are those weirdos wording? So those things actually will be explained now in a very, very formative manner, espionage and spying is the action of the classified or confidential details in uh, right in an unauthorized manner from the authorized owner. So the undercover agents, we call it infiltrators, assisting secret services or covert agents is just like many covert defense organizations, undercover agents are basically spying these details. So they try to disclose top secret information captured from numerous sources in the world. Like, you know, for an example, we spy some state. So in, in a manner like, you know, spies deployed into the particular country and they are collecting, accumulating the details and finally uploading into their command and control head office or head, head center. So it could be any individual who spy, uh, spying this information, right? It's a, it's, it's, it could be a service of the government or a, it could be a military specialist, intelligence uh, specialist. It could be a privately held company uh, or self-governing operation uh, could be this type of a person who's uh, doing the espionage or, or launching this espionage campaign. So that's all about the espionage and spying. So coming to uh, next point, backdoor is all about backdoor in, in precise manner. So the backdoor is a computer, uh, the program or technique, right? Frequently it's uh, lying in a secret manner in the covered channel to evading, uh, right, 
uh, or bypassing standard authentication uh, in a computer system or a device or embedded device or whatever the hardware could be a software as well. The backdoor could hidden inside uh, any digital device, especially right. Uh, well, the application sometimes, right? So as you can see, the backdoors can uh, can be in uh, operating systems, uh, various software applications, hardware, virtual machines, kernel level, uh, very deep, uh, low level uh, hardware, right? And network uh, layer. Uh, well, in the, even the source code level, we call it shrink trap codes. And the backdoors are also called the trap door. So the trap door is basically, that's another word actually, uh, you know, derived from like, you know, the traps. So uh, it gains the remote access over the covered channel. Uh, it's basically acquired in unlawful uh, manner. So in the professional world, the backdoor is called as uh, an unprofessional approach and obviously it is illegal so it's basically it's it's uh, in the security it's denoted as a potential security risk so so that's all about like you know the the, the small piece of information about backdoors so uh, lawful backdooring or unlawful backdooring it's just the, the two questions so what and where are those hardware implants so that's the new word hardware implants so hardware backdoors special special hardware backdoors hardware implants or hardware backdoors are form of backdoors implemented in hardware and making the covered or stealth channel through the hardware over the firmware of the computer chip. So uh, the firmware is a small program which is actually written in the BIOS or uh, uh, computer chips where it's it's uploaded a kind of a, a machine related uh, information, which contains the machine related information or many other aspects or parameters of the hardware. And this firmware, inside the firmware, there could be certain backdoor implement can be implemented by many sources and these backdoors may be uh, straightly implemented as a hardware trojan codes or hardware rootkits uh, inside the integrated circuit circuits or uh, firmware or computer chips hardware implants are uh, meaningfully challenging the security of various smart cards sometimes several hardware security modules which is widely used in the back uh, you know what you call the background uh, what you call communication in a top secret uh, uh, what you call the top secret communication and hardware authentication tokens we call it uh, i tokens rsa tokens and this uh, <coughs> authentication modules right and sometimes hardware, this type of backdoor uh, could be inside CD uh, or DVD or Blu-ray discs or USB drives, TPM chips, trusted platform modules, and the various microprocessors or other type forms of crypto processors. Except the exceptional investment is made in anti-backdoor technology to design extraordinary method to special uh, military and intelligence, which means that mostly if the company or a, or a specific organization needs to have anti backdoor technique, they have to spend a lot of money and they may need to create the custom made chip specialized to their environment that you can, uh, you know, what you call there are so many ways to do it, you know, those information available in the covertly in covert manner. There are so many, uh, what you call, companies are providing these type of services as well. So uh, the hardware implants have also been considered for automobile hacking, uh, smart cars, smart tractors, and those uh, those having the central computer system, right? They may have these type of backdoors, and the certain backdoors are revealed in the world. So the next one. 
interception, ever stopping, and wiretapping. So, what are those things? So, <clears throat> initially, interception means explain an unauthorized individual or a party have gained access to an asset and extremely significant or extremely important. The outside party can be an uh, individual, an entity, or a company, a program, or computing or computer cluster or network system. So, uh, well, they once like you know they do interception, right? They may uh, illegally copying or or exfiltrate or leak the data over this interception channel. They can do this type of much more damage to the systems. And the, the next topic when we uh, when we elaborate. We have certain uh, other aspect of things as well, and uh, the the small uh, the subtopic is called ever stropping. It's orig originated from practice of standard under the roof space of house. It's just like someone actually sneak peek over the attic of a house and listening to a traditional conversation, and ever stropping. Uh, actually, it's a it's kind of a phenomenal uh, uh, history word, right? It's uh, is a huge. Uh, it could be uh, uh, the, the life cycle of the ever stropping could be a full time or partial time, or that means the full time or part time. Uh, well, and um, it's sneak peeking the uh, private communication. Now uh, there are certain examples. The ever stropping can be done for phone calls. Doesn't matter if it's analog or digital, and wireless technologies, uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, and upcoming 5G connectivity as well. Radio link called RF links, Li Fi, which is lying uh, down in the future, called light field uh, fidelity. So uh, it's, it's under the uh, what you call um, uh, still experiment stage, instant messaging, video conferencing, Wi Fi communication, military. Uh, communication, top secret communication, fax transmission, blah, blah, blah. Also denoted, uh, now this type of eavesdropping can be lead into the man in the middle attack using session hijacking. In the com uh, we call it in the computer security domain. And uh, when the eavesdropping and interception in, in, in one side, the other side is kind of a wiretapping. This is actually now, this is uh, in line with the both uh, about topics. So wiretapping defined in the history, the perspective, the wiretapping uh, litigations have always data struggles balancing the private rights. Now, privacy rights. Now wiretapping is, uh, well, in human rights aspect, it's an illegal thing. Most of the time, the government, military, intelligence, and law enforcement, well, they do this type of wiretapping regularly in the intelligence like you know if for an example if it's like so if there's any uh, kind of a terrorist need to like you know track them down so or uh, if already tracked uh, in the in the in the list they know like you know uh, where they go where you know what they do and all those things so they could intercept or wiretap their uh, cell phone right so there are so many techniques can gsm uh, can be easily intercepted if it is like you know not encrypted. Technically, wiretapping is a stealthy electronic monitoring and uh, monitoring of telephone, telegraphs, uh, cellular mobiles, fax, internet based communication, especially. Uh, there are so many um, other aspects of the communication based on internet uh, can be uh, wiretapped over the uh, you know these these kind of like modules. So the next topic. So the the legality is the interception is legal or illegal. It's just actually let's try to balance these uh, these two uh, aspects. Now interception is basically as we explained in there. Basically we are acquisition the data from any wire or wireless communication. Right and or electronic and electrical, mechanical or, or any other like you know from any other device. So when these things lying down in that such manner, interception 
in legal manner that means in legal side is gaining communication network data or information from lawful authority for an example uh, law enforcement they have a right to intercept the uh, this type of communication but you must need a court order so the de the, the sole determination of the uh, interception is analysis or analysis the evidence for something or some research purpose a communication network data or information contain of signaling or network management information or any other sensitive information so this communication network they may have uh, gain access into the data or information forms it also consist the content of the communication as well so that means if it's a data packet or ssl if it doesn't matter it is ssl or ssh or any our channel uh, http or any our ftp our channel uh, protocols but there is a way to decrypt these uh, things at the uh, interception level so one of the key that means the rudimentary for legal seizure in the interception of the telecommunication by law enforcement agencies supervisory or directorial agencies and the secret military and uh, intelligence services they do these type of formulations of interception but in country to country the law suits are you know differ and uh, the uh, the interception acts may be uh, having uh, uh, deviations right so depending on the country or state or whatever so these things but still the interception is always a strict manner to law enforcement uh, at the rudimentary manner lawful interception and or judicial interception so lawful interception it denotes the services in the telecommunication and the network uh, telephone networks that permit intelligence that means th that allows intelligence intelligence military or law enforcement agencies with a court order or other legal permission uh, based on their own country situation or countries what you call jurisdictions so, uh, so to selectively wiretap individual subscribers mostly right if it is a telecommunication uh, telecommunication uh, scenario it's mostly telephone calls or sometimes uh, they are internet lines internet uh, the what you call traffic most nation states nation state that means government requires certified telecommunication operators so mostly every telecom provider is is registered under the uh, telecommunication act in any country deliver their network with legal interception gateways now mostly uh, in, uh, in this is not uh, well perceptions available in, in most of the uh, third world countries but in western countries so this legal interception uh, is uh, law or lawful interception are basically uh, is a common term um, so uh, the government also like you know they created uh, mostly the gateways and their own uh, the guard nodes uh, to eavesdrop like this type of telecommunication uh, interception uh, of the communications uh, the end interface that means the other interface of these gateways have been standardized by the recommended standardization organization so the, the scenario is like you know uh, from end to end it is uh, you know um, what do you call uh, that the telecommunication uh, organization is uh, taking care but the uh, the guard nodes or, or eavesdropping nodes are managed by the government but that is not visible to the end user so that's the beauty of the lawful interception with the uh, with the legacy or traditional public switch telephone network called pst and so wi-fi packets packet switching networks and soft switch technology so which is actually uh, well operating in the telecom side and server based application or cable systems with modems and the lawful interception uh, successfully executed by gain access the mechanical digital switches backup 
the target communication. Now, it says that the, these type of technology, soft switches, uh, PSTNs, wire, wire, no wireless telecommunication equipment or uh, telecommunication methods can be mechanically, or mechanically intercepted if it is a voice. If it is a digital, digital image dropping can also be executed by the authorities. So state sponsored warrantless wiretapping. Warrantless wiretapping. Warrantless wiretapping is something that uh, for the government in certain aspects they uh, they they go beyond right by defining uh, the segment of the warrantless surveillance refers to the surveillance of the people within the specific region or particular country. Now it doesn't uh, well. For this type of wiretapping, you don't need any court order, right? Because that is defined in their jurisdictions, including their own citizen. They can spy their own citizen without even uh, go for like their legal system. During the collection of theoretically uh, of theoretically uh, foreign intelligence, right? There's something called FOSEC, right? Foreign security, foreign intelligence security, by intelligence agencies at the section. Terrorist Surveillance or Counter-Terrorism Act in the worldwide perception. It doesn't mean that uh, what you call every country must do this surveillance, but uh, well, if you consider the terrorist surveillance, like you know, terrorists are always you know threat to uh, the modern and the professional world. So to uh, evade from the terrorist attack or terrorist like communication, because if the terrorists are communicating over the same channel, well, there should be a way to uh, wiretap without having uh, any uh, any uh, boundaries like uh, human rights and those things because in the warrantless wiretapping you don't need any uh, because nobody's care about like you know the what you call uh, the uh, uh, nobody care about the human rights or privacy or whatever everything will be ignored because it's uh, it's just justifying the the boundaries as be because of the uh, the national security, we do this type of surveillance and nobody can actually uh, skip or, or go beyond that because it's directly uh, government is dealing with military and the intelligence that when it comes to intelligence and military, that's the first aspect and it comes to terrorist, uh, what you call threat. So uh, it's, it's a worldwide perception. So several top secret agencies were sanctioned, they, they were authorized to monitor without obtaining a warrant from the court. Uh, it could be the phone calls, internet uh, or cyber activities, text or SMS messages or other communication connecting to any individual uh, party alleged by uh, intelligence agencies to be the outside particular state. So uh, it could, doesn't matter it's it's outside state, they have warrantless wiretapping law even even most authoritative country can uh, override some country's uh, telecommunication rights and then just uh, well using the warrantless wiretapping uh, law they can always have a right to monitor these type of activities and uh, even if it is the other end communication is positioned within their own state so uh, doesn't matter that they don't have a well formed a law uh, other than the surveillance law because that's the worldwide perception so that's why this warrantless wiretapping is everywhere so most of the authoritative countries uh, do this type of wiretapping even right now so surveillance mass surveillance and cyberlance so surveillance is defined in espionage. It's it's a, it's a subset of uh, espionage, and surveillance is the monitoring of behavior or activities, actions, or other altering information of the determination of manipulating, managing, or guiding, or defending the people or state. This consists of observation from the remote location. Now, this is actually collected from the remote location, means of electronic equipment or 
interception of phone calls or internet traffic as such electronically transformation transformed information surveillance is used by the government and military organization mostly intelligence agencies for reconnaissance that means the information gathering purpose and deterrence of the crime in a state so basically like to uh, mitigate these type of crimes uh, government and the intelligence and the military organization should have these type of surveillance acts uh, and the next next section now the surveillance actually goes to the cyber and it's basically surveillance derived from the the word called cyber plus surveillance is called surveillance is uniquely carried out this type of act from cyberspace perspective and the notion derived from this as we explained the cyber plus surveillance and called surveillance these forms of clandestine or covert or top secret operations now regularly launched by the various authoritative government in the world including military forces and intelligence agencies in the world so the uh, when the surveillance and surveillance is there like that and the mass surveillance is playing the vital role vital role in the sophisticated manner mass surveillance is a sophisticated surveillance and an entire considerable segment of the nation so the mass surveillance is something that we target uh, the surveillance process but it is now some manner we target the whole country or the portion of the country or region right so in order to monitor the group group of citizens sometimes like you know if it's like you know so uh, you are your part of uh, uh, some state so a state decide that they uh, spy their own nation that is something called mass surveillance right so they spy their own country but uh, it could be like you know done by the partial manner or a, a or an entire country manner right the surveillance is frequently carried out by local or federal governments or governmental organizations then again uh, it may carried out by the corporations and defense contractors mostly these defense contractors are, are basically uh, you know the contractors they do the defense uh, you know activities for the government the perspective of the government or military and uh, they act and uh, well another the, the part of the government so they have their own jurisdictions and initiatives but these uh, contractors are always hidden it's, a, it's mostly shadow organizations depending on each nation's regulations or judicial aspects like you know so they have the diversified judicial frameworks or, or, or jurisdictions and based on that these acts will be carried out authority uh, the authorities and the permission required to engage mass surveillance actions now the special one time uh, or oh, many uh, aspect many levels of permission mandatory to engage this type of mass surveillance acts under the mass surveillance law lawsuits in their own countries so coming up to the next point uh, top secret cyber hawk and eagle eye covert operations now it's something that uh, it's something uh, it's something uh, very uh, uh, uncommon words eagle eye eagle eye is the uh, anti terrorism initiative that teaches the individual how to identify and report possible terrorist activity over the digital media or cyber media now that's that's something called eagle eye now the program uh, provides 24 hours hotline that means it is actually uh, well it's a joint operation from the government military intelligence as well as certain other clandestine uh, uh, undisclosed like the organization which is inside the government now they provide 24 hours hotline service and the people can call and based on the the facts they allow uh, information to be reported as soon as suspicious activities occurs like you know the nation have the right uh, or nation uh, think that they need the security they should uh, what you call uh, allow uh, to uh, grab this information as soon as possible and then if you have the information just call them call the government and report it and after the reporting session is done uh, and uh, the reports are collected 
among the federal like you know the lawsuits agencies as well as a certain like you know authorities like in the in the agencies like you know they have a committee we call it like commanders right commanders like you know in the in the committees in order to ensure the appropriate action is taken that the what they were whatever like you know they have uh, the action uh, against this like you know terrorist act or whatever the what you call reported the uh, what you call incident they should be able to mitigate this type of scenario over their own operations uh, these count actions will be taken undisclosed top secret organizations now this type of count action now for an example if the if, if a person reported that something like you know something uh, the some mass uh, destruction weapon is distributed by this uh, terrorist so this this is the hot news for the government so well once it's reported and it's 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 uh, they have the uh, the way to validate all these things and then after the count action there is an organization or organizations uh, they have uh, their own pre instruction instruction manual based on those manuals and the orders they react to mitigate this type of threat and uh, it's at appropriate to uh, their own state with now certain secret agents will be deployed to find out what exactly going in and the spies will uh, tamper the communication maybe like you know the entire country at the time right so uh, so this type of situation not uh, mostly uh, 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 happened in in the this uh, what do you call this part of the world what is the western world this uh, entire the eagle eye operation is a common scenario in the government perspective it's obvious the covert operation indeed so the higher, uh, the next one is cyber hawk cyber hawk is a top secret surveillance and counter surveillance technique led by the state that means the government shadow organization that means different contractors or, or any shadow organization which is a uh, covert organizations the sole determination so the sole purpose of this uh, particular approach is to safeguard assets or building or, or could be like vips very special people the military or law enforcement agencies intelligence squads and many more things mostly used by uh, now this type of acts uh, right is just like surveillance act now this type of things will be deployed over the uav unmanned aerial vehicles we call it drones inspector drones or military drones using the nanotechnology based on invisible drones now if you actually uh, <coughs> sorry uh, if you uh, uh, Google uh, nanotechnology based drones, you can see there are certain drones having the invisible uh, surface. Well, uh, it's there, yeah, like you know, so many researchers found, found many ways using the nanotechnology to how to be invisible. It's just like, uh, it's just like that, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, some, uh, some uh, motion pictures are demonstrating. Uh, the how the invisible cars uh, they are and sometimes the vehicles and so many things just like exactly the military drones are so invisible you can see in the normal light and it's uh, well uh, well they spy this type of uh, they they spy this the, the covered information so um, and um, they they do like you know uh, intercept in using the drone technologies they they intercept the phone lines inter technologies uh, and they can uh, absorb the eme and emp electromagnetic emittance and or electromagnetic pulse so well over the emp and eme there are many things can be done later stages like you know the we will we'll, we'll talk about the air gapping and all those things happen uh, with the perspective of EMP and EME and they can still spy the radio frequencies and the signaling asset over the signal intelligence operation uh, explained well explained in the mass surveillance right so these type of scenarios can be uh, done using the drones uh, uh, especially the military drones are very 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 perfectly designed truly perfect design 
and utmost sophisticated technique embedded inside the military drones. So that's all about the cyber hawks. And the generic term military intelligence and com command and control center, right? Command and control. So military intelligence is covered military technique. Military intelligence is not a uh, normal intelligence. It's a covered military technique that uses the accumulating top secret information and having analytic tactics offer the guidance to direct, to assist the military intelligence in their decision, right? To counter numerous situations in terms of national security. They only consider about the national security and in terms of national security, they do many actions. They take many actions against anything comes against the national uh, or nation state and that everything, uh, the, what you call defined in their uh, own manuals. The objective is to accomplish uh, by offering an assessment of the data called massive data mining uh, using a certain AI and big data uh, harvesting techniques. Um, if those such data from numerous range of sources engaging towards the authorities' mission requirements. Uh, responding requests, uh, the uh, certain questions as part of the shadow operation and covert campaign uh, preparation. Now, uh, using this type of data, they are harvesting uh, the sensitive information which is threat to national security. And in accordance with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, evidence, they act uh, using certain uh, tactics it's just uh, similar like you know what you call you can see the motion picture showing the strat operation the strat teams are deploying in accordance to the situations something uh, something called special weapon and tactics right the special t the in, in mostly like in other countries special task forces right so this type of thing it's uh, it's only for uh, well only uh, well uh, focus on the national security. To offer these type of analysis, uh, the authority's information requirements are initially identified, which are uh, then uh, co incorporated into covert intelligence collection, analysis and dissemination and distribution. Now these, these are sub parts of the uh, military intelligence process. Uh, it it's provides the analysis. Uh, based on the authorities information requirements and uh, what the initial at the initial identification then uh, after the initial identification and then it's mostly incorporated into the covert intelligence collection analysis and dissemination and or distribution so these three stages will be done after the collection of the uh, subsegment of the particular information and next one the command and control so the command and control is just a proactive monitoring critical infrastructure critical infrastructure of or government infrastructure or cyber or network operation over the espionage or usually called the spying in real time now what they do is they have critical infrastructure critical infrastructure something called uh, water power a uh, nuclear uh, uh, subjects, uh, the nuclear weapons, right? Energy, so uh, any other uh, well, gas or whatever, like you know the oil. So oil distribution. So these things are nas critical national infrastructures. So those things, uh, well, using like you know command and control, these type of things are targeted because uh, most of the people are trying to. Uh, what you call try to gain the control of the entire scenario like for an example uh, you know a um, couple of months ago there was actually uh, the SCADA attack happened in Ukraine power grid so the Ukraine power grid and someone actually forcefully shut down the power grid over the SCADA attack so well the command and control unit right it's something that uh, it's established uh, to, uh, well, typically integrates into uh, uh, 
full spectrum of cyberspace operation. Now, what they do is basically they are operates in the full spectrum of cyberspace operation, electronic or digital warfare and secret information operation. And it's confirming freedom of action for friendly forces or homeland security. So, uh, well, homeland security and the friendly forces. So the friendly forces and homeland, homeland uh, security is uh, just like a common, uh, the, the, but the special task right task force well they they have uh, control of the civil uh, uh, civil uh, civilians of the of the nation state so um, they have something called freedom of action that means like whatever like you know happens to uh, whatever comes they they have to protect the nation so the freedom of action means they could take any sort of action uh, to mitigate any kind of uh, threat of the state. So now in this scenario, it's mostly things, uh, most of the 99.9% 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 operation will be done in cyber domain. And, um, and the, uh, sometimes it designated as the covered com uh, campaign of authority and direction led by properly designed senior officer over Zion and attached forces in the accomplishment of the secret mission. Now, for an example, uh, you get um, a, a botnet attack or, or nationwide denial of service attack to one telecom provider. So at the time, this uh, command and control is, uh, you know, having uh, uh, the, the sensors of every borders of cyber lines so they detect this type of dos attack so in order to prevent this type of attack it is not the organization who's actually victimized will take the action but as a government they take the action to protect the national assets so that's called command and control and uh, that's actually completely a military operation and um, well, they launched the top secret mission to safeguard the national asset over the cyber boundaries. In a, in a state, the president or a, the secretary of defense keep the authority of the entire command and control uh, over the armed military forces and intelligence and the, uh, the, the decision will be maintained by the secret command. So the sole determination of the CNC is to come back botnets, right? And DDoS or reflected denial of service attacks, uh, advanced persistent threats, SSAPT, which means that state sponsored advanced persistent threats, coordinated attacks over the spear phishing schemes, as spam campaigns, malware, spyware, or truth, various Trojan attacks and certain counter intelligence over the FIS, a Foreign Intelligence Service, and uh, hacker attacks, various hacker, hacker attacks, detect traitors, now disgruntled na nation. Certain people are threat to their own nation. They hate their own nation. So though we call it disgruntled insiders. So sometimes like people call whistleblowers, right, whistleblowers as the uh, traitors as well. A uh, classic example of whistleblower is uh, Edward Snowden, right? So that's uh, one of like, you know, the key perspective of whistleblowers. So they threat to a national security. So therefore the command and control try to mitigate and try to gain the entire control of the car, cyber domain of the country by using the command and control top secret agency uh, which is having this type of control in the world. So most of the countries have their, their own command and control. Most of these command and control is not on the surface, it is underground, established in underground centers. Well, now this is shows that the threats of the government, now as you can see, Europe, Russia, Asia, South Africa, and America, and certain Australian uh, subcontinents, having many, many, many uh, government attacks, right? So uh, 
with uh, military and intelligence uh, the uh, the said presentation called stateless sponsored state sponsored warrantless wiretapping and government mass surveillance over the lawful interception and the first thing uh, the the concept and the proof the hardware backdoors the hardware backdoors uh, of uh, you know coming from china now in every embedded uh, you know embedded chip so right? and, uh, and and every computer carries these type of chips as well so it's as you can see the wind bond uh, is a chip carrying these type of thing the the hardware backdoor and the nvidia world famous uh, graphic manu graphic card manufacturer video card manufacturer uh, the, it's, it's having uh, fbi federal bureau investigations backdoor so always uh, they're having like you know these type of secret weapon which is threatened to the whole the whole world and it, it shows that the concept of the hardware trojan as you can see the crypto module crypto hardware is there so the uh, the hardware trojan uh, infected into the hardware device and uh, the hooking into the our channel of uh, the inside uh, you know it's bypassing crypto hardware module and hooked into the our channel and uh, it's secretly collecting the keys before making uh, make use of the cryptographic module and uh, uh, directly making the output from the trojan's perspective uh, this example of the uh, is this type of uh, the hardware trojan is slingshot apt it is advanced western uh, threat it's a sophisticated hardware trojan so we don't have uh, time we have very limited time therefore so uh, I hope that you uh, reveal something uh, and so many things is out there so you can actually harvest yourself and see how insecure you are when you are online. So thank you for listening this uh, the presentation and the cyber talk and I hope that you enjoyed and it, uh, take a certain uh, amount of knowledge within, my, the, within the context of the cyber talk. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant day.